The Bay Area is a wonderful place to experience ocean life. In fact, it is a home to many coral reefs. According to Michael Webster from the Coral Reef Alliance, corals are essential to human life, and we got to talk to Michael Webster right here in the studio. Hi, Michael. I want to welcome, welcome you to the show, and you are the executive director of the Coral Reef Alliance. And so I guess the first thing I want to start talking about is what are coral reefs and why are they so essential to human life? Sure. Well, first of all, thank you for having me here. Um, coral reefs are a kind of ecosystem that live in shallow, warm waters in the tropics. And as the name implies, they're really based on corals. And corals are kind of unusual animals. People don't even necessarily think of them as animals because they look like rocks. And the coral animal grows on the bottom uh, uh, in shallow oceans, and when it grows, it uses sunlight to make energy, and part of the process of growing means making its own skeleton. Its skeleton happens to be made out of calcium carbonate, which is what we think of as a rock, as limestone. And so as corals grow, they build up a rocky reef. That rocky reef that the corals build is the coral reef. That's important because many, many, many different kinds of life depend on that reef as a place to live. When we look across the oceans, across all of the world's oceans, and we look at where the species are, about one in four is found on a coral reef. And so when we think about coral reefs and we look at other ecosystems that are similar, they're most like a tropical rainforest on land, which has an extraordinary number of species found on it. Right. One thing I was reading about um, coral reefs is that they also provide medicine, or there's these discoveries where they actually might be able to provide medicine to a lot of diseases that we have now. Can you talk a little bit about that? Sure. So when people are trying to develop new medicines, one of the things mm -hmm. they're looking for is different kinds of molecules, different kinds of biological molecules. Over the last uh, decade or two, people have started looking more and more at coral reefs, and they're starting to find lots of very interesting molecules on reefs that are used for things like painkillers, for cancer drugs, for antivirals, even potentially new generations of sunscreens coming wow. from things that are found on coral mm -hmm. reefs. So it's so important, definitely, to protect these coral reefs. So maybe you can tell us about how does the Coral Reef Alliance help to protect these coral reefs? Sure, it is super important. If you look at where coral reefs are found around the world, they're found in about 80 different countries spread around the tropics, and there's a lot of people who depend on the coral reef on a daily basis. They depend on it for food, they depend on it for tourism income, and if you look at all those people, it's something on the order of half a billion people relying on the reef. What we do as an organization is we try to figure out how those communities that are depending on the reef can manage that reef well. One of the things that happens very often is that when you have a community that lives close to the shore and they depend on their reef, they also have the potential to undermine that reef over time by taking too many fish off of it or by polluting it. But there's a lot of communities who don't want that to happen and they're trying to figure out ways that they can change their behavior so that they can have a healthy reef and they can benefit from that reef. That's where we come in. We've worked all around the world with different communities, and we found different kinds of solutions that can work in many different places. And so we work with communities to help identify those solutions and make sure they work. Wonderful. And I know you're based in Oakland, so um, you've also been around for some, some years now too, mm -hmm. right? So how did this first get started? So the Coral Reef Alliance has been around for a little bit more than 20 years, and it started with some scuba divers mm. who were traveling around the world and mm -hmm. visiting reefs, and they noticed that a lot of the reefs that they loved weren't as nice as they used to be. They were changing in ways that they were, they were unhappy about, and they thought, well, we should try and do something about this. So they banded together, and they created the Coral Reef Alliance, which was originally really focused on how do you organize divers and the dive community to help save coral I see. reefs. Very, very interesting. And so now, obviously, it's grown, and there's different types of people working together to protect these reefs. So I know that you also collaborate with scientists, biologists. Can you mm -hmm. talk about that? Yeah, our organization does a lot of collaboration. Coral reefs are going to be very difficult to save. They're all over the world. But the good news is there's a lot of people who are trying to do it. And so we're interested in working with communities to help them uh, find ways to manage their own reefs. But we're also interested in working with people who have great ideas or great tools or resources and helping bring that to the work that's happening within communities. Sometimes that involves scientists. Sometimes that involves partners at other conservation organizations who have ideas, who have resources, and the ability to help communities figure out how to manage these resources. I think that's great, great. Mm -hmm. The other question I wanted to ask too is, now the coral reefs are also home to different types of marine life. Can you talk about that? 
Sure, and I think I mentioned a while ago, there, there's, there's uh, an extraordinary diversity of life on coral mm -hmm. reefs. Uh, scientists who have made estimates estimate that there's something like two million different species that are found on reefs around the world. And it's an enormous range of diversity, everything from the corals that I was describing before mm -hmm. to things like sponges, to starfish, to an extraordinary number of different kinds of fish. There are manta rays and sharks that visit reefs and dolphins and whales. Uh, just about anything you can think of in the ocean uh, has some relationship with the coral reef. That's, yeah, that's very amazing to me. That I, I mean, I never thought that could be, like you were, I think we had spoken earlier that there could be like these rainforests of the ocean. We don't tend to think of them like that or that they're even alive. I actually didn't know too much about that myself. So. Yeah, it's kind of an extraordinary experience. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you've ever been on a reef, but when you're there, you see so much abundance and variety. Mm -hmm. It's really kind of overwhelming. I, I've spent a fair bit of time in rainforests as mm -hmm. well, and rainforests are amazing, beautiful places, but you actually don't see nearly as much in rainforests because everything is hidden. Mm -hmm. A lot of the birds are up in the canopy and the monkeys are in the canopy. Mm -hmm. and, and so in the forest, you have to look really, really hard. Mm -hmm. And while you can find things looking really, really hard on a coral reef, the moment you enter the water, you're surrounded by fish and turtles and corals and everything is around you right in front of you. I see, I see. I know one of the threats to coral reefs, um, I mean, I don't know if this is out of our scope, but plastic is also mm -hmm. something that's usually been getting to the ocean, mm -hmm. right? Is, do, does your organization do anything like that to inform people about Plastic yeah, or, plastics mm -hmm. are becoming a bigger and bigger mm -hmm. problem in the ocean, particularly because they flow to the surface and they don't break down. Mm -hmm. So they stay around and around and around and they do things like enter the food chain mm -hmm. and they cause lots of problems for different organisms. They're probably a problem on coral reefs. Mm -hmm. They're definitely not the biggest problem on mm -hmm. coral reefs. Um, uh, pollution, you know, you know, plastics pollution is not good for a reef and there's some evidence that little tiny bits of plastic when it I breaks see. down mm -hmm. can get inside corals. But beyond that, we don't worry about plastics as much as we worry about some other things. The kinds of things we really worry a lot about on reefs are things like overfishing, things like pollution, particularly nutrients and sediment, you know, mm -hmm. dirt and things getting into the water. Mm -hmm. And we also worry about a lot of the changes that are happening globally. Things like the oceans getting warmer, things like the oceans getting more acidic. Uh, those are the kinds of things that are causing the biggest problem for coral reefs today. Yeah, I see. So what can we do as a community to prevent mm -hmm. this or to help protect mm -hmm. the corals? Sure. Um, there's a number of different things that people can do. And one of them is look at their own actions, particularly their actions around carbon and how much carbon dioxide they release into the atmosphere. Because the carbon dioxide in the atmosphere is changing our global climate and it's changing the oceans in ways that are difficult for corals. But the other kinds of things you can do are, if you're going to travel anyway, um, visit a place that has a coral reef and help support that local economy, and maybe learn about the organizations that are trying to help that reef. In a lot of places, we work with communities who have developed their own management systems, for example, to manage their local uh, reefs. You could support those organizations directly and help them do a good job of making sure that they take care of that reef. Wonderful, this is some great, great, great mm -hmm. information. I guess my final question would be, um, is there anything else you wanna share with us or think that's important for us to know? Um, I think it's important to know that coral reefs are really the lifeblood for communities around the world. They're probably one of our most fragile and most extraordinary ecosystems on the planet. And we really have a choice right now as a species about what the future of coral reefs is going to look like. And it's really about what we do now, what we do in the next decade, two decades, or three decades, that's going to determine whether we have coral reefs 100 years from now. So if you're interested in learning more, uh, do some research online, get involved, help support those organizations who are doing their best to help make sure that we have coral reefs for generations to come. Wonderful. Michael, I want to thank you for joining us today. And final question is, how do we get in contact with you or with the Coral Reef Alliance? The best way is through our website. We're at coral.org. Uh, we also have a Twitter feed and we have a Facebook page. Links to those can be found at coral.org. Okay, wonderful, wonderful. Thank you again for joining us and being here today. Thank you. It's yes. been a pleasure.